These are old plates, you can tell from three departure, nothing much has changed. They added in a holding leg length, so they're not one that holds on the total four departure anymore. So that's about it. Okay, let's go through this chart. Provo chart is actually probably one of the most difficult uh, charts. Is Provo a obstacle departure or standard departure? Obstacle. It's an obstacle, it says it right there. Okay, generally obstacles are textual only, okay? Occasionally they're graphical like this when they're a little bit more difficult, it'll say obstacle, okay? The difference between an obstacle departure and a standard instrument departure is a standard instrument departure actually takes you somewhere. It'll actually take you northbound or southbound or somewhere. An obstacle departure procedure normally will do nothing more than basically climb you up to a safe altitude within the vicinity of the airport. Hence, here at Provo, we all end up at Fairfield. We don't actually get to go north or south, maybe on a route of flight, okay? So that's the difference between an obstacle and a normal departure procedure. Okay, on the Provo, it starts out, this section right here tells me about what? Can you read it? The obstacles. obstacles. It's a description of the obstacles, okay? It's amazing how many people get in there end of course checks. We're like, what's this? Oh, it's, it's the obstacle departure procedure. Okay, can you read that to me? Sure. Runway 13, multiple trees beginning. Oh, it's a description of the obstacles. Okay, next section, this section right here. This is the killer one. Students just have no idea what it is or how it is or whatever. So, it says, this DP requires takeoff minimums. What are takeoff minimums? Climb rate. They are weather minimums. So it is referring to weather minimums. What are standard weather minimums for takeoff? They're right here. Standard is one mile for one and two engines, half mile for three and four engines. Okay. Those are standard takeoff minimums, if other unless otherwise published. So it says this DP requires takeoff minimums. For standard minimums, refer to the airport chart. Okay, we just did that. Runway 13, standard or lower than standard if authorized. So I'm going to use standard minimums, one mile or half mile, or lower than standard if authorized. Well, is a quarter mile lower than standard? It is. It's referring to this. It's called adequate visual reference. Adequate visual reference is applicable to the airlines or operators. It is an actual letter of authorization that you have with the FAA as a company that authorizes you to depart if you have a quarter mile visibility at Provo if you have adequate visual reference. Adequate visual reference is described and defined in your letter. So for example, Delta might have an, uh, a letter of authorization that says, if you taxi out and you can see the runway edge lights, you're good to take off. That's adequate visual reference to take off in a quarter mile visibility. SkyWest, on the other hand, their equipment's not quite as good, so maybe their letter says, eh, you gotta be able to at least see five stripes down the runway. I don't know. It's gonna be some sort of definition that is company specific based on the pilot training and the aircraft capabilities. So adequate visual reference does not apply to us. It only applies to you if you actually have a moment of silence. <laughs> Letter of authorization with the FAA. Any questions on that? Okay. So runway 13 standard or lower than standard if authorized. We've talked about that. With a minimum climb of 400 feet per nautical mile to 9,000 feet. So it does specify a climb gradient. Over here it says that also. It gives us our climb gradients. Okay? Or 3100-3 for climb and visual conditions. What does that mean? 3100-3, 3100-foot ceilings, 3 miles visibility. What that is saying is if you cannot maintain the 400 feet per nautical mile, you can't take off unless you have 3,100 foot ceilings and three miles visibility. Okay? Or 
Now, normally, what they do is they actually do it in this format. This is a different chart. This is Elko, Nevada. Normally, what they do is they just say right here, with a minimum climb of 330 feet per nautical mile, and then they just say other. And they just make it nice and easy. Other means other climb gradient, 2500-3. So does it have to be both of those or just one of those? Like you have 2500 foot ceilings and, and three mile visibility. Yep. And it's based on you being able to see the obstacles so you don't hit them. Okay. Provo, on the other hand, for some reason, I don't know why they can't just add in another box. There's plenty of room and they can just put the other box in here, but they don't. Instead, they write it out all long-winded and confuse everybody. Okay. Now, climb in visual conditions is actually an instrument procedure. Okay. Climbing in visual conditions is basically an instrument procedure in which you're basically going to circle over the airport climbing. You're going to take off and you're basically going to start climbing over the airport. If we read down here, it says, or climb in visual conditions to cross Provo Airport southwest bound at 7,400 feet. So we're going to climb basically over the airport till we get to 7,400 feet. Then we're going to start the departure and continue our climb to 9,000. It's basically getting us up so we don't hit obstacles and then going out. Having said that, climb in visual conditions. The 3100-3, that is a three mile visibility limitation. It is also a geographical limitation. You have to climb in visual conditions within three miles of the airport. So not only is it a visibility, but it's also a limitation on where you can climb. Here in Provo, it's very obvious why, because at four miles, you hit the Y in the mountain. So, any questions on that? How many feet per minute is 400 feet, 400 feet per nautical mile? Depends on your ground speed. Depends on your ground speed. How do I calculate that? <laughs> I look at the graph right here. See, there's a little graph. <laughs> 75 knots ground speed and 400 feet per nautical mile is 500 feet per minute. Okay, that's what's nice about Jefferson is they give you these, they'll always give you those climb gradient graphs on the chart that you're using so that you don't have to try to reference it. If you try to use FAA charts, they're like, reference appendix D, and you're like, not very usable, okay? What was the formula again? The formula is you take, uh, so we take 400 feet per nautical mile, divide it by 60, because we want to turn it into minutes, right? And then you times it by your ground speed. So if we were doing 75, and we'd get 499.99, or 500 feet. So you just take it, divide it by 60 times and divide your ground speed. So that's the other way. But Jepson is really nice to give us the graph. Questions? To answer this real quick, you're going to see this on your charts. It says up here, trans level, trans altitude. You notice they always say 18,000 feet. That's because that's where we switch our altimeter from 2902 to standard altimeter and everything like that, right? If you go down to like Mexico, they actually are different. Meaning, if I'm climbing, my trans altitude might be 18,000, but when I'm descending back out, I'm supposed to switch over it to flight level 210. And so they'll actually have you switch at different times depending on whether you're climbing or descending. So in the US, it's always 18,000. That's just what we do. That's why it's published on there is because internationally they could be different. Where is that at? Right up top here it says trans level and trans altitude. And you're going to see that on the approaches all the time too. Okay. What's the difference between the two? One is I'm climbing up. So at what altitude am I going to change okay. my altimeter? And, and then the other one is I'm descending. Down. So at what flight level am I going to switch back to the current okay. altimeter setting? All right, I've got this little star symbol right here. What's that star symbol? See it? <clears throat> little star? It's a rotating beacon on top of the tower. Everybody always looks at it and goes, oh, it's the control tower. It says right there. Okay, those stars start with a circle as a rotating beacon. Biggest thing you guys can do is go through your Jefferson legend and make sure you know these symbols. They're just symbols. Okay, I always make fun of 